Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the netting process of capital gains and capital losses. Specifically here we are discussing the capital assets gains and the capital assets losses. As a quick reminder from the prior session, you want to make sure you understand the different categories of capital gains and capital losses because this is what we discussed in the prior session. We defined what is capital asset and we discussed briefly the different categories. Under capital losses, we could have short-term capital losses and we could have long-term capital losses. Remember, for a short-term capital loss, you held the capital asset for less than a year. For capital gains, remember we have three categories under the capital gains. We could have short-term capital gains from collectibles, which are subject to 28% tax rate, unrecaptured depreciation, 25% tax rate, and other long-term capital gains losses, which could be subject to 0, 15, and 20%. And in the prior session, we discuss when do you qualify for 0%, 15, and 20. So notice capital gains, really, they have three three categories collectibles unrecaptured depreciation and other long-term capital gains now the netting process start by netting short-term capital gain against short-term capital loss so the first thing you do is you break down the short-term gains with the short-term losses that's the first thing you do then you net out the long-term gains against the long-term losses so basically you have the short term and the long term netted out together if each of the categories mentioned above has a net gain then the net gain maintain their character whatever that, that character is collectibles 28 percent and unrecaptured depreciation or other long-term capital gains so what we're going to do we're going to start slowly looking at the first example where we have a situation of gains and see how we net them out then we move into more complex situation where we could have gains losses and different categories and work through the netting process before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So the first example we're gonna look at, assume a taxpayer has the following gains and losses. Long-term capital gain of 5,000, short term long-term capital loss from collectibles of 2000 so both of these are collectibles first what you do is you net that category by itself and notice here i'm going to put a plus for a gain so we have a five thousand dollar net long-term capital gain sorry plus three thousand not plus five thousand plus three thousand that's the net that's and this is subject to 28 percent because it's collectible long-term capital gain non-collectible 6,000, long-term capital loss, non-collectible 3,800. Again, here, when we net them, we have net 2,200. And this is going to be subject to 0, 10, 15%, depending on the taxpayer tax status. Short-term capital gain of 4,000, short-term capital loss of 3,000. We net them out. We have 1,000 short-term capital gain. And remember, this is going to be taxed as the ordinary rate, whatever your rate happens to be for ordinary income, you'll be subject to that because it's a short term capital gain. Now, what's the appropriate tax treatment? I kind of basically went through it by netting the gains and the losses in each of the three categories. We have long term collectibles of 3000 long term from non collectible 2200 and short term capital gain. Therefore, the 3000 is subject to 28 percent, the 22 subject to 0, 15 or 20 and the 1000 is subject to the appropriate tax rate for that in the visual. Now, if each of the categories now has a net loss, what would happen? Up to 3000 of that net loss might be deducted against ordinary income. Again, what we are assuming here is you have losses from stocks and bonds, not from personal use asset. And what you can do, if you have losses, you can use 3000 against ordinary income. I told you in the prior and the prior session to memorize this. The remaining losses are carried forward to, off to offset future capital gains. And let's take a look at an example. 
Let's assume we have a taxpayer with long-term capital gain of five, long-term capital loss of eight. We have a negative eight, a negative three thousand here. Overall, we net them out negative three thousand, and this is long-term. We have short-term capital gain of four, short-term capital loss of one. We have a negative thousand, and this is short-term capital loss. What is the appropriate tax treatment? and losses listed above. Well, guess what? We have losses, all losses. So what we can do, we can use 3,000. So notice in, in total, we have 4,000. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take 3,000, and this is gonna be good. That's 3,000 will offset ordinary income, and what's left is 1,000 will be carried forward for future years, either computed against uh, gains or used to offset ordinary income. So the taxpayer can deduct 3,000 of capital loss against ordinary income. That's important, but basically it's a good thing. For, for example, a person like me who always, you know, not good in trading stocks, incur losses. Uh, so I can use this 3,000 and the remaining 1,000 would be carried forward. Well, I'm unlucky basically. Now, what if some categories have net losses while other have net gains? Now we have to kind of deep, dive deep into the netting process becomes a little bit more not challenging or complicated i would say we just have to make sense out of it so let's work this let's first look at the at the rules okay if we have a net short-term capital loss okay it's netted against long-term capital loss it's netted against that starting with a 28 percent why 28 percent if you want to take advantage why not start with the with the gains that has the highest rate. So when we have the short-term capital loss, first we knock out the 28%. If anything left, we knock out the 25%. If anything left from the losses, we take care of the 0, 15, and 20%. What if we have long-term capital loss, which is the 0, 15, 20%? We have long-term capital loss in this category. Well, good. Guess what? Same concept. We're going to start with the 28%, basically not the same concept. We're gonna start with the 28%, then move to the 25, and any remaining is netted against short-term capital gains. Because first you have to, first the long-term capital loss will have to take care of the long-term capital gains. Then we move to the short-term if anything left. So first, think of it first, you have to clear your category. Your category is long-term. So clear any gains in the long-term, and if you still have losses, you could move to the short-term. What if you have long-term capital loss from the 28% class? Well, that's netted against now the 25 because there's nothing higher than the 28. You start with the 25, then you move on to the 0, 15, and 20. Again, you start with, within your category, which is the long-term category. And if there's anything remain, you will go to you net it against short-term capital loss. Now, bear in mind that the 25% will always have a capital gain. There is no loss section for the 25 unrecaptured depreciation, there is no such thing as capital loss for that. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example. So we have long-term capital gains from collectibles, 15,000, long-term capital loss from collectibles, 23. Overall, we have a loss of, if my math is right, of 8,000, and this is the 28% loss. We have long-term capital gain for the 0, 15, 20 of 5,000, long-term capital loss of zero, we have plus 5,000 in this category gain. We also have short-term capital gain of 12,000, short-term capital loss of two. Overall, we have a gain of 11,000. So what is the appropriate tax treatment? So here's what I want you to do first. First, think of them as they're playing in two different leagues. We have two leagues. We have this is one league, long-term and short-term. So before you move into the other league, you have to kind of clear your own league, clean, clear your own club or your own category. So what's going to happen, the, the 8,000 of the 28%, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to knock out this gain. And as a result, when we net them out, we're going to still have, we're going to have remaining negative 3,000. I'm sorry, negative 5,000. No, negative 3, this is a 5, my handwriting. I can't even read my own handwriting. We're going to have negative 3,000, the 28% category. Now we are done with this. We're done. We, cl we cleared our tournament. Now we're going to move into the short term. Now this 3,000 can clear 3,000 of the short term capital gain. And what we're left with is positive 8,000 short term capital gain. So this is what works. 
First, the gain and losses within each category are netted out. So we net out so 8, 5, and 3. Then we there's no short no short term capital loss. So the net long term collectible of 8,000 are first netted against the 3, as we mentioned. Then the remaining 3,000 is then netted against the 11, and we're left with 8,000. And how is that 8,000 taxed? It's taxed at the ordinary tax rate. It's short term. You, basically, whatever your tax rate is, then you're going to be taxed based on that. It's like your regular income, simply put. Let's look at another example. We have long-term capital gain from collectible of 15, long-term capital loss of 10. Overall, we have plus 5,000, and this is the 28% category. We have long-term capital gain of 5, long-term capital loss of 2. We have 2,000 in this category, the 0, 15, and 20%. We have long-term capital gain from the 25% class of 4,000. This is plus four. We have short-term capital gain, long-term capital gain, uh, short-term capital gain, short-term capital loss netted out at negative two. Again, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to separate the league. We're going to separate them into short-term and long-term. Okay, what do we have here? We have losses from this category. Well, think about it. If you have losses, what would you prefer? Would you prefer that 2,000 offset the 5,000 or would you prefer that it offset the 4,000? I would say I would rather be offset the 28%, the 5,000, indeed. So when we net those two out, we're going to end up with plus 3,000 at 28%. And this one still remains plus 4,000 at 25%. Now, in this league, we already netted the short term. We netted out to 2,000. Now, we have this as a loss. How are we going to treat this loss? Well, again, what would you prefer this loss to do? Would you prefer to reduce your 4,000 or your 3,000? And I hope you know you prefer you prefer that you would net it out against the 28, which would going to keep us plus 1,000. So this 2,000 would re re reduce this by 2,000. So we're remaining with 1,000, 28%, and 4,000. 25%. So this is how we net them out. So first, each category separately, the 5,000 for long-term capital gain, 2,000 losses, and 4,000 gains. Then we have the net short-term capital loss of 2,000. So the net long-term of 2,000 is netted first against the collectibles, and we're left is 3,000. This is what we, this is what I showed you. The net short-term capital loss of 2,000 is netted against the 3,000 and we're left is is a thousand so this is what we are left with as a result the long-term capital loss will be 28 percent 1000 and the 4000 is left for the which is we could not reduce that let's look at another example long-term capital gain from collectible a thousand long-term capital loss from collectible zero so we have a plus 1000 28% category, long-term. Long-term capital gain of three, long-term capital loss of eight, net them out, we have a loss of five. We have long-term capital gain from 25, zero, we don't have this category, short-term capital gain of three, long-term, short-term capital loss of zero, we have negative three. Once again, the first thing you do, you separate the long-term from the short-term and you net them out. This 5,000, it's going to wipe out the 28, and we're going to be left with negative 5,000. I'm sorry, negative 4,000, 0, 15, 20% category. Now, guess what? We have losses here, losses here. What are we going to do? I'm sorry, this is a gain. This is plus 3. Well, if we have, if we still have losses here, what's going to happen? This loss is now, it's going to net. It's going to wipe out all the gains that we're left with is negative 1,000 in losses. Negative 1,000 in losses, 0, 15, 20%. Guess what? We're not done. We're going to take this 1,000 and deduct against ordinary income because we could deduct up to 3,000. So what happened, this $5,000 loss, long-term capital, long capital loss, wiped out the gain on the collectibles, wiped, wiped out the gains on the short-term capital gain, and we still have a thousand of losses we were able to use against our ordinary income. Not bad at all, not bad at all. So we were able to use it. So first net, net each category, a thousand, five thousand, three thousand. Then the net long-term first netted against the collectibles. So we're left with four. This is the four here. 
Then the net loss of 4,000 netted against the three, what we're left is with 8,000. Now the entire remaining capital loss may be deducted against ordinary income since we can deduct up to $3,000. Now this is confuses people. Simply put, I showed you on the prior slide where you can deduct it. It's basically a freebie from the, not freebie, but it's a good deduction. I prefer if it was like 5,000 or 10,000 because a lot of people, they buy, buy investments and they incur losses. I wish they can they can increase that limitation to five or 10,000. But again, they don't want people to take risks. You don't want them to encourage taking risk, but at least they give you 3,000. So if you're talking $3,000 and you're in the 30% tax bracket, you basically save $1,000 on your taxes. So, okay, you had a 3,000 of losses. Basically the government allow you to deduct that 3,000. And if you're in the 30% tax bracket, you will get a basically saving $1,000 on your tax bill. This is the benefit of it. Now. Capital gains, capital gains, capital losses from capital assets is a very important topic, the taxation of it. So what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures. Whether you are a CPA, EA candidate, accounting students, you really need to understand this topic inside out. Capital asset is very important, section 1221. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.